But we begin tonight with a dark reality for the women of Arizona and a cautionary tale for every American woman, courtesy of a blast from the past. Back in 1863, two years into the Civil War, Arizona was not yet a U.S. state. That wouldn't happen until 1912. American women could not vote. That wouldn't happen until 1920. And the age of sexual consent for girls was just 10 years old. Yes, I said 10. That year, Arizona was declared a U.S. territory with a governor appointed by President Abraham Lincoln. His name was John Noble Goodwin. And the 27 white male legislators who wrote the rules for this brand new territory had a very specific vision, using draconian laws to bring order to what they viewed as a wild Western chaos. Among the laws they created and passed one year into Arizona's new status in 1864 was one stating that, quote, a person who provides supplies or administers to a pregnant woman or procures such woman to take any medicine, drugs, or substance, or uses or employs any instrument or other means, whatever, with intent thereby to procure the miscarriage of such woman, unless it is necessary to save her life, shall be punished by imprisonment in the state prison for not less than two years nor more than five years. According to historian Heather Cox Richardson, the brand new legislature also provided that no black or mulatto or Indian, Mongolian or Asiatic shall be permitted to testify in court against any white person, thus making it impossible for the tiny fraction of blacks who escaped slavery by heading west to protect their property, their families or themselves from white Arizonans who might want to do them harm. This legislature also declared that all marriages between a white person and a black person shall be absolutely void. So in 1864, a legislature, a legislator, a legislature of 27 white men created a body of laws that discriminated against black people and people of color and made girls as young as 10 available for sex and marriage. And they mandated that any woman who became pregnant by any means must give birth. Well, today, the Arizona State Supreme Court has ruled that that 160-year-old law, almost completely banning abortion in the state, shall be enforced. Let that sink in for a moment. A 19th century law from a time when interracial marriage was illegal, but marrying a 10-year-old was perfectly legal, now dictates life in the 21st century. Women and doctors in Arizona now have 14 days, just two weeks, to prepare for this violent assault on reproductive rights, and they are absolutely terrified. I'm devastated. I just, I didn't think that they would do this. I really didn't. And, uh, you know, it was bad enough already with a 15-week ban, because it wasn't just a 15-week ban. It was like 41 onerous restrictions on women. I mean, women have no choices now. With good reason. This now means that if you have anything scheduled after that date, you have no access to reproductive health care. And any doctor who does try to help you will face prison time. If you had any doubt that Republicans wanted to turn back the clock, then let this day stand as a stark reminder of just what they think of women. In the four to two ruling, the majority of justices issued this warning to physicians across the state. Physicians are now on notice that all abortions except those necessary to save a woman's life, are illegal, and that additional criminal and regulatory sanctions may apply to abortions performed after 15 weeks gestation. Yesterday, Donald Trump proudly reminded us that he ended Roe, lying that everyone wanted it sent back to the states. I was proudly the person responsible for the ending of something that all legal scholars, both sides, wanted and, in fact, demanded be ended. Roe v. Wade. My view is now that we have abortion where everybody wanted it from a legal standpoint, the states will determine by vote or legislation or perhaps both, and whatever they decide must be the law of the land, in this case, the law of the state. Well, this is exactly what happens to women when you leave it up to right-wing Christian nationalists who are waging a full-blown war on women's independence and health care in the states. Arizona joins roughly 20 states that, after the fall of Roe, now ban or seriously restrict abortion access. 
Women in these states are reproductive prisoners, subjugated to the will of a minority. While Trump says he wants to leave it up to the states, well, that, too, is a facade. A farce sold to the media so he can seem like he's somehow moderating his position. But behind him stand a cadre of forced birth activists who will be tasked with implementing these repressive policies across the country if he returns for a second presidency. Let me introduce you to one of them, Roger Severino, vice president of domestic policy at the Heritage Foundation. He used to work for Trump during his first administration, leading anti-abortion efforts in health and human services. This man, according to The New York Times, has been crafting a plan in the Heritage Foundation's Project 2025 that would circumvent and leverage the regulatory powers of federal institutions, including the Department of Health and Human Services, the Food and Drug Administration, the Department of Justice, and the National Institutes of Health. Here's what Severino said when the Supreme Court ended abortion access. The federal government has an absolute role in this. There cannot be now two Americas. One America where unborn life is protected and another where unborn life is treated the, as the equivalent of medical waste. Yeah. Right. That is untenable. This has to be settled nationally. Uh, a house divided against itself cannot stand. Yeah. We can't have two classes of Americans. Quoting Lincoln. Well, it's pretty grotesque, isn't it? For this man to pimp the civil rights era and even the Lincoln legacy as an excuse to further restrict women's constitutional rights across the land, which is exactly what he intends to do. It's all laid out in a lengthy Heritage Foundation proposal that would require renaming HHS the Department of Life, ending access to Mifepristone, prohibiting stem cell research, and creating a pro-life task force in the White House, among many other things. So when Donald Trump pretends that he has no negative agenda for women, know that he is lying to you. It's not what he says, but what he and the people he's going to bring with him plan to do. And he's not the only one lying to your face for political reasons. A few years ago, Carrie Lake, who lost to the Arizona governor's race in 2022 and is currently running for the United States Senate, told NBC News she does not support Arizona's controversial territorial rule. But here she is just two years ago promoting the 1864 law. Obviously, I think Roe v. Wade should be overturned. And I think the Supreme Court, I have a good feeling that they're going to do the right thing this time. And, and again, what, I'll echo what Steve just said. We have a great law on the books right now. If that happens, uh, we will be a state where we will not be taking the lives of our unborn anymore. There is a reason that Trump and Lake and other Republicans are doing this. And that is because the vast majority of Americans, 70 percent, support abortion access in all or most cases. That is why today's decision is not just a catastrophe for women, but also a political earthquake. And just like the state of Florida, Arizona voters could very well have a chance to restore women's rights. Just last week, a coalition of reproductive rights organizations announced that they have gathered more than 506,000 petition signatures to get an abortion access measure on the ballot this fall. That is if Republicans allow them to get that far under his eye. Joining me now is Arizona State Senator Eva Birch, who has bravely discussed her own recent abortion and Melissa Murray, professor of law at NYU and MSNBC legal analyst. State Senator Birch, I'm just going to let you talk about the reaction of your, yourself, who's been through this ordeal, and the women in your state to this ruling. To be honest with you, I am shook. I, I mean, I'm just dumbfounded. I, I don't think that uh, we were really expecting this. I, I cannot believe that we are even having this conversation, to be honest with you. Um, and I've been watching uh, some of my Republican colleagues and and, and just the, the Republican legislators here in Arizona starting to uh, backpedal. Hmm. But what we have to look at is the reality that this ban could have been repealed at any moment. This ban didn't, we have, didn't have to have this conversation at all. Arizona legislators had the authority to repeal this ban at any time. And not only did they not do it, but they filed an amicus brief bragging about how they didn't do it. So we are in a situation now where we have to be really cautious about uh, making sure that the people of Arizona and of this country understand why we're here and what needs to be done next. Um, let me come to you, Melissa. Um, let me put the map back up here of the the states where abortion is now banned or on the way to being banned. This person from the Heritage Foundation or Heritage Action said from Project 2025, essentially quoted Lincoln, you know, who said, um, America cannot survive half slave and half free. It's very clear that the right wants the country to be all slave. 
Well, again, Roger Severino, who you mentioned, um, is not unknown in this conservative legal movement. Um, his wife is Carrie Severino. She was at one time the head of the Judicial Crisis Network. That's part of Leonard Leo's shadowy network of organizations that has completely reshaped the federal judiciary and has also helped change the face of judiciaries at the state level. And, you know, the senator noted that they weren't expecting this. They should have been expecting this because the Republican government in Arizona stocked that state Supreme Court with Republican appointees. It's an entirely Republican court. Of course, this was going to be the outcome. Like, I testified against Brett Kavanaugh when he was nominated to the United States Supreme Court, and I said that he would be a reliable vote to overturn Roe versus Wade. Mm -hmm. I was laughed at, but I was right. We cannot continue to be surprised. They are playing in our faces. We know what they're going to do. We need to act now. This map looks horrible. It's not just Arizona that's reintroducing this new slash old law from 1864. Mm -hmm. There's an 1849 law that is going to be used in Wisconsin unless a court steps in and stops it. Michigan repealed its law. This is happening all over the country. It is go time. Hey, everyone. MSNBC has a new and improved app. You'll get real-time alerts and analysis, live blogs, in-depth essays, video highlights, and the best 2024 election coverage. Download the new MSNBC app. Here's how to do it. You tap on the App Store on your phone. You hit search on the bottom right corner. You type in MSNBC. You click on the MSNBC app. You click on get or the cloud icon and enjoy it.